So what I'm doing now is that I'm monitoring my Spring Boot application. Actually, you can monitor any application with these tools I'm going to be showing you right now. This is very easy to work with and they, are, they can be included in Spring Boot very easily. Now what happened on the screen now is something failed, something went wrong. One of the primary servers failed or one instance failed and a switch over or a failover happens and triggers the second instance of the server. And that's why you have 100% at this point, okay? So if I go back to this place and start it up again, it, you'll see that it will switch over to the primary one and it's 100% failure, that's what you're seeing, 100% failure on this server, you can see. So I'm going to be talking about all these things, all this way to monitor your application. So please subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed so that you don't miss any updates. Monitoring the application is part of quality assurance and quality control. One of the best uh, things you can do in development, in the development pipeline. And this is what I'm going to be talking about at this point. So there are different ways, some are not easy, some are a bit challenging, but I'm going to try to break them down at this point. It's part of high availability, I think that is the word to use. So once this server comes back online, you can see that that where you see 100% showing rate, a failure is going to reduce back to zero and, and then we have uh, the other instance uh, comes online. So this is called Hystrix Circuit Breaker or Hystrix Dashboard. That is what we are going, well, that is what we are seeing right now. That's the first thing I'm going to be talking about. Hystrix Dashboard is a dashboard that gives that gives you opportunity to monitor your Spring Boot applic application. But before you can have this dash this dashboard, you need to include the Hystrix circuit breaker dependency as well as the Hystrix dashboard as well as the actuator dependency. So I'm going to be showing you then these things at this point. So this is the step by step on how to implement this application. You can also get it from my repository. Just copy it and see how it works exactly uh, so basically you have uh, three dependencies you have the cloud dependency you have the dashboard you have the actuator dependency and a few annotations you need to add to your application and then you have this beautiful dashboard right now now everything normalizes in this dashboard as you can see uh it's about it has switched over to the first one and you have everything is green at this point is logging all the requests okay so now, how do I simulate number of users accessing the application? Meanwhile, this is the application simply returning a list of users right here. So what you do is to copy this endpoint. I'm going to copy this endpoint. You simply go to JMeter. I'm going to come to JMeter. Now JMeter is free. Download it, unzip it, and simply run the jar file. So this is the jar file for JMeter. Let me just show you on my desktop. So simply run the jar file. Once you run it, it gives you... Uh, so let me just do it so that you see exactly how it works. So I'm going to simply delete everything here. I'm going to assume that you are just installing JMeter for the first time or you are adding JMeter for the first time because you don't have to install it. So when you run the jar file and, and it runs, you now have to add the endpoint or the URL of your application. In this case, if I go to this place, I'm going to copy the URL of this application, add it to JMeter, simulates users connecting. You can say you want 100 users to be connecting to this application and making requests concurrently. So for instance, JMeter opens up at this point. If I right click and say add, add thread group. Here I want to specify that I want 10 users. I, I want them to connect and it looks 1000 times and save ah uh, yes save and i want to add something called a sampler which means http request okay so in the path just paste the path that or to your to the endpoint of your application and then finally add something called a go to listener and add um uh view some re view result tree and that's all you need to do and at this point if you fire it up so if you go to, if you fire it up and go back to the result tree, you see requests are being made at this point. Okay, so this is about Hystrix fallback and also how to use JMeter to simulate several users connecting to your application so that you can actually test it to see what is happening. So let's talk about another thing. So everything should be fine. Another thing we are going to be talking about is something called Prometheus. Prometheus is also 
something you can uh, is a server that you can run on your machine is a, and it helps you to be able to also gather metrics from your Spring Boot application and um, and be able to view this metric. So this is the Prometheus interface. Now there are some details I'm going to clarify about Prometheus interface, about the Prometheus, because you actually need to run it on a visual machine, on, a, on Docker, let's put it that way. It's very easy to run on Docker, install Docker and simply run it on Docker. How to configure the Prometheus is also here. I've made a step-by-step -step right here on, the, on my website. Now the system is slow because I have several servers running on the system. But the step-by-step -step method of configuring Prometheus you can find right here in my website. It says how to configure Prometheus and Grafana with Spring Boot for monitor monitoring microservices. So if I go back to the Prometheus dashboard, it's called a time series database. What it means is it captures metrics of your application based on instance of time, maybe after one second, two seconds. So a time instance is capturing and put and saving it in a, in a, in a time series database and then it's, it's plotting a graph based on it. So let me just show you, for instance, if I execute this, you can see a graph that comes up. Uh, let's choose something else. Let's say I want to execute this. Okay, that's fine. Um, how about DC duration in seconds and so on and so forth. So you can actually see different metrics. I'll recommend you try, you try to go through all these metrics to see what they are all about, okay? Again, if you have challenges, please let me know. Uh, feel free to let me know by leaving a comment in the, in, the, in, the, in the comment box below this video. And I'm going to respond to you to give you the needed help you know you, you need because this is what I do here. If you want to support me, feel free to go to Patreon or buy me a coffee and then support what I'm doing right here. Now let's talk about another thing. This one is called Grafana. Grafana actually gives you excellent, beautiful, very nice looking graphs uh, on the performance of your application. Actually, Grafana gathers data from Prometheus and used to plot this graph. So Grafana kind of connects from Prometheus to get this, the same metrics for your application. So how does Grafana work? If I go to Grafana, now how to set up Grafana is also very easy. It's in my website, but I'm going to be making a more comprehensive video about Grafana after now. So please subscribe if you've not subscribed. So this is the Grafana interface running at port 3000. To log in, I use admin, admin, uh, okay. So I'm going to log in, uh, log in. Wow. So why does it, okay, it wants me to change my password. I'm not changing it right now. So this is a Grafana interface. The first thing you want to do is to tell Grafana that this is the port where Prometheus is running so that it can gather the, met the metrics from Prometheus and then use it in Grafana. So I'm going to go to Prometheus. I'm going to copy the URL at this point. So I'm going to copy and go back to Grafana and click on the, uh, go down to, I think, data sources. Go to data sources and then add a data source. And of course, Grafana can gather data from anywhere, from Prometheus, from my SQL server, from MySQL, from any database and Elasticsearch, AWS, a wide array of data sources that Grafana can, um, can gather data from. I'm going to be making a video on this later on in this series, but for now let's keep it simple. So let's go to Prometheus. This is Prometheus. Simply put the endpoint URL of your Prometheus, not the endpoint of your application, but the endpoint of Prometheus. So I'm going to paste it, as you can see. If I go down, I'm simply going to save and paste, and it says uh, data source is working. If I enlarge it, you can see data source is working. The next thing I'm going to do is to click on this plus sign and click on dashboard and click on add panel. That's what you should do. It's very easy. And now you are going to go back to Prometheus and copy something across. So we are going to copy this for what query, whatever query you want to see, copy it. Actually, you can add several graphs. You can actually add another graph and whatever you want to do, you can actually execute. You see multiple graphs uh, and, and so let's go to go back to Grafana. So to do to now see this graph, I'm going to go to metrics and simply paste this. And I think this should be okay. So all right. So I'm going to simply click on add query. Okay. So you can see a beautiful query here. You can actually say fit. You can actually say exact. You can actually feel. 
So as the application is running, it's generating more and more metric, and then that's, that is exactly how it works. So this is how to use Grafana, but I'm going to be making more detailed section on it. For now, I want to show you all the tools you, that you can use for monitoring, and they are easy to use. First, I've mentioned the history dashboard. I've mentioned Prometheus. I've mentioned Grafana. Now there's another one, a bit a kind of static, is called the JMeter dashboard. So you know I mentioned JMeter when I, I come here and say that we need to simulate several users connecting to our, to our application. Now, once you have JMeter running, it's also gathering metrics because it's running something, so it's gathering some metrics, right? Fine. So it means that you can also generate some graphs from JMeter and really nice graphs, more detailed, but not as beautiful as Grafana. So if I, let me just show you the code that you can run. So this is basically the code that you run. When you run this code, it's going to generate the graphs for you. So it says, there is the location of JMeter, JMeter.bean, and then you have the test plan. You, may, you know, I created a test plan. If you go here, you can see this name of this test plan. And then you have the name of the CSV outputs. You can choose any name you like and then give the name of the folder where you want it to, to host the HTML pages of the graphs you are generating. So once you do that, you have a folder based on your specification now. So this is the folder. If I go here, you can see a folder called high availability. And this folder now contains HTML. Now you can configure this uh, command to run at intervals that give you something close to real time uh, view or visualization of what your application looks like. So if I open it and go to the index page, you'll see a beautiful graph. Uh, in fact, there are many of them. So if I go to charts and go to throughput, I can see a number of graphs right here. So you can see nice graphs telling you you can see this says 200, it's 200, it means 200, okay. And we also have 500 to be maybe server or bad gateway or something. And then exceptions and so on. So this tells you what is happening actually in your application. So we've discussed four different monitoring tools. We've discussed the history dashboard. We've discussed the Prometheus. We've also talked about Grafana. And we've talked about JMeter dashboard. I'm going to now be diving real deep, uh, one by one, because they're actually a bit challenging. So I want to find a way to break it down uh, to beginner level so that you'll be able to follow along in, this, in the tutorials. Now, I've written two items. One is the history and a bit of Prometheus in my website. So feel free to read. If you have challenges, let me know. Now, this is my channel. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss any updates from me. And if you have any challenges, I used to say it every time, you can reach me on social network, maybe my Facebook, my LinkedIn, talk to me, and I'm going to give you the needed support to be able to, to, to monitor your microservices, to be able to build new applications. And that is exactly what I do. So I'm going to be stopping here. I'm Kyneton, the Tech Pro, and I'm always there for you.